Hi there, it's Pete, Mindwise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors, and this is another video review on another bit of kit. It's being titled as a survival stick, but in my mind I'm calling it a survival baton, because if you title it a survival stick, it's something that maybe people think you've got a knife and crafted it out of a piece of wood that you've gone and foraged in some woodland somewhere. So I'm calling it a survival utility baton, which has got a variety of uses. It's quite novel in a way. It's not the most lightweight of bits of kit that you can sort of put with EDC in your pocket, that sort of thing. But in my mind, I think it definitely has its practical uses. So as a whole, as a baton, the whole thing, uh, it can be used for self-defense if you're into your martial arts, a scrimmer, uh, that sort of thing, Yawarado, uh, Kobotan, obviously which is much smaller. Um, then you'll appreciate the use of this within the realms of martial arts or self-defense, which of course is still a part of survival. If your life's on the line and it's being threatened and you've got to defend yourself as a last resort, then, uh, you know, I'm not condoning <laughs> aggression or anything like that, you know, but it's a fact of life. And if you're outnumbered or that sort of thing, um, in my mind, as far as I'm concerned, you know, you're entitled within the law, but if there's without rule of law and your life is on the line, then uh, something like this could actually help you out. Because I can think of far more extreme ways of defending yourself. So what have we got either end? Well, that little silver protrusion there is a tungsten tip. And there's also one the other end as well. And you'll probably be aware something like that could be used to break glass and to help you escape. It's also specified to break small bits of stone or brick. So anything that needs maybe sort of a hammer type effect to it, you could use the tungsten tip. Obviously within reason, but it definitely has its breaking uses.
So I've just wiped off the tungsten tip. You can see it's a little bit scuffed, obviously, because it's just been hitting brick and stone. But there you can see. There's no disruption or structural damage to the tungsten tip and it's all secure in that screw end as well. The screw connection sections are quite a few. You've got the tungsten tip end here that can unscrew and be taken out but something else can be connected where my finger is, just there and that will make sense as I take it apart and you see how it can connect and make different tools. But the tungsten tip is very strong, nice and precision. And there's also a seal there, just before it closes, there's also an O-ring where my thumb is there, which actually seals it. So as it actually makes contact, there's a little bit of friction there, but you know it's sealing. So if you did want to make these containers empty and have one of the sections, blocked either end and have a void in there, it would keep anything that's inside waterproof. But again, that will make more sense as we take it apart. And it's exactly the same the other end as well. This tip unscrews and is the same size and dimension. So on close inspection, you can see that little white circle there with an image of what is actually the shape of a spanner. And the open end here and the handle is the other end. So if you think of the open end is the direction we want to be working to. Now it does unscrew just here. And it's sealed with an O-ring, but you can see there's nothing there because something else is inside here. But I'll show you that in a moment. I'm just going to screw that back up. And then, so it's this bit that's just sealed. Now if we go the other side here, where there's a sort of a grip, we unscrew that and this upper end comes off and that is the first tool. It's a knife come scythe. You press the spring loaded button, it comes down, catches, and then you can use that for cutting grass. Anything that you can imagine an L-shaped cutting tool could be used for. Plus it could be used for impaling as well, you could um, have it as a gaff for fish, but it actually has a gaff already for fishing, which I'll show you that next part now. So I've repositioned it securely, so that's in a straight line. That will go in that tube here, and I'm going to seal it back up. And then the O-ring that's inside gets a little bit of friction, you know it's got an airtight seal. Now if we go to the next one, just here, if I unscrew that on this, area here to grip and unscrew the next tool which is a gaff and saw but also it can be used for a cutter use emergency like seat belts that sort of thing there's similar sort of little tools that have got the same sort of shape but that's also a cutter you could also use it for gutting fish but also it's got a very good albeit small serration but very very solid saw and I've sort of given this a bit of a test run to see how strong it was, is, and as far as something like this is concerned being made, I don't think you could get any stronger than this. But I'll be doing a demonstration with cutting some wood in a moment. So I'll we'll safely put this cutting tool away, screw that up. The O-ring, there's a little bit of friction there, is going to seal it up. Now if I go from this end, obviously there's no handle here, but you can select and swap them around. So if I undo this one, now the friction's easing off because it's going beyond the O-ring. And if I unscrew that, you can see it's like a Tanto blade. This is really sharp. It's got a sort of a saw edge there. And it's also got like um, rasping teeth there, which you can use to descale fish. It's not that sharp, as you can see, I'm rubbing my finger on, so it's not that dangerously sharp at all. But it would be good for abrasing anything or descaling fish, that sort of thing but the blade is very impressive. I've done paper cutting with it, cardboard cutting, and also small bits of wood, and it's got that little serrated bit there. So it's quite a sort of um, similar to many blades that have these sort of features. And then we'll safely put that back in the tube, 
tighten that up. And then you have everything as the batten. To expand a little bit more on the versatility of the tubing system, you can see here is a little image of what is in front. As I said, the opening of the spanner is where you're sort of working towards the cutting part of the blade this way. So if I unscrewed like I did previously, this section I held that and this bit came off, it exposed the blade which looks like that shape. The same as this one and the one at the end which was like the Tanto blade. So it's little images. But if I unscrew the other side, what happens is, I've already previously loosened it to make it easier, it comes off as a separate section. So I'll just lay that down. Now I've got the other two sections. Where I unscrewed it previously on that line here exposed the blade that was in this tube. But if I unscrew it the other side, which is already loosened for convenience, and take that off, I've got three sections that can be transported safely with the blades kept safe in the tubing. Of course you can have separate cutting devices like small saws for cutting wood, uh, a knife to fill it and gut fish and meat, that sort of thing, and another sort of, um, just like your bushcraft knife or your survival knife. But at least with something like this, it's quite unusual, it's different being in a batten type of um, structure in different sections where actually you know one can be a handle with a blade on it um, it's quite sort of a, a unique type of idea and plus as well as I say it can be as a last resort and I do say and reiterate last resort if you did need to defend yourself and say you're into sort of batten escrima type of martial arts that sort of thing then uh, this would be quite appropriate but I quite like it because it's heavy duty, it's well made and I think it's just another version of a survival tool, a bit of kit to utilise in maybe ways that other bits of kit that are already established might not function as good as. So you can see that all the blade devices are interchangeable where they unscrew from this part here from the actual tubing and then of course you've got the other small little batten which is there on the right hand side and again you know I don't want to get into discussing and talking about the politics of self-defense personally I think it's private and personal to each individual how they defend themselves and the type of system they might use by default that you're defending yourself and uh, it's a personal approach to you know how you want to protect your well-being but something like this, you know, you can use, if it was separate, to break windows, glass, breaking brick, that sort of thing, small bits of stone. Anything that you feel that this would actually have the use to actually break from the impact of the pointed tungsten tip. Plus as well, if you're into, say, Kobaton, or as it's known, Japanese style of self-defense, Yawarado, which is atemi, which are nerve points of the body that you strike. And as I say, as a last result, if your life's on the line, then as far as I'm concerned, you protect yourself in the best way you can. What we'll do now is we'll get this little beauty and give it a little test run and show you how it cuts reasonable size bits of wood that you'd even use maybe uh, the same sort of blade as a multi-tool or even a small saw. But uh, we're going to give this a bash and uh, so you can see how it works. Okay, here's some dead wood. It's the lower limb to a tree. It's definitely dead. Don't want to cut anything live, although that still gives another demonstration. But it's sort of quite solid. Give that a bang. And then we'll start to give it... So it's cutting okay for the type of tooth blade that it is. You can sort of go round it and you get quite a long stroke on it as well. And even if it meant just breaking this limb off, 
and creating the initial cut. I could quite easily break that off now, but what I'm going to do is actually going to take a slightly steeper angle so I can get a little bit more momentum, in, momentum into it. So you can see I'm nearly sort of, well, I'm over halfway through now. But we'll keep going. It's got a nice wide gap with less chance of the actual cut gap pinching the blade. Just take that out so see if you can see the depth of it there. Let's just finish it off and I can actually put this and procure this for a later date for firewood. And just come up on that angle so there's less resistance because it's a narrow a bit. Then back to the centre line. Voila. So that's not bad. It's what you'd expect and maybe a little bit better from this sort of blade. So here's the base of the trunk of a tree and we're coming up to about average head height here. And then if you take it up a little bit higher, say you had to cut or needed to cut something that was much higher that wasn't reachable, then I'm not going to because there's still a bit of life left in this branch, but it's accessible by the sheer fact I've got three sections so that it's extended the handle of the versatile saw. Plus this can be used as a gaff as well for fishing at this length. So I'm taking the saw blade off that bit of tube and now I can actually fix it to the Tanto blade. This section is lightweight, the tubing, although it's really, really solid. It's like, um, I think, a aluminium alloy that a lot of these things are made out of nowadays that's sort of like aircraft alloy, sort of military grade. And it definitely feels, it feels nice to the hand. It's got the, the grip to it. It's lightweight. And, you know, I can sort of, I know it's just the earth, but I'm banging that on the ground and the fixing, very well made, the precision fixing, like it's obviously not full tang because it's not going into the tubular handle, but it's that sort of whatever the tang effect in there is, the foundation of it is really strong. So I've just been whittling down this bit of wood. It's not exactly dead wood, but I didn't cut it, found it on the ground and it still feels sort of like slightly damp to the touch, so it's not just rotten and it is going to give a bit of resistance to the blade. So I've just been whittling that bit. This is going to be even more awkward as you can see, the little sort of knot bits where the little bits of stem came out. So I've actually used some of the saw edge, that serrated bit here, to get rid of some of the worst of it. So you can sort of saw and strike it with the blade. and then just go for the tanto part of the blade as well. And again, this isn't the easiest bit of wood to sort of chamfer and whittle by the nature of this particular part that I'm cutting. But as you can see, where it's easier and it's more smooth and parallel, it just cuts much easier. So, So as far as I'm concerned, all right, it's not your actual A1 bushcraft survival knife, but it's very solid, very easy to resharpen, and uh, does the job that you would expect from this type of part of the tool, of the sectional baton, and maybe just a little bit more, but say really solid. So now we've got three sections connected together and we'll have a go at scything or sort of cutting down some nettles yeah you could use a stick bash them down but I say if something was a little bit tougher to cut then you'd probably want something sort of a sharp blade or something similar to this
So the sectional baton, admittedly, might not be everybody's cup of tea, but uh, it's certainly got its uses and uh, worth considering, um, as it has sort of a versatility that's a bit different from any other little bit of kit that's out there. And its uses are as limited as your imagination. And even if it was just kept under and grandma's bed. <laughs> but that's what I'm calling the survival baton. I thought I'd do a review on it because, you know, some people will be interested in this type of thing. So here's some more detail and information as to maybe a few more specifications that could interest you. So it's nice and sturdy, a bit like me really. <laughs> so as always, thanks for watching, really appreciate your interest, hope you found this of interest and uh, catch you in another video soon. Cheers, take care.